Praise the Lord. We are truly blessed. I had the opportunity to do some studying this week in a in a very important chapter that I believe that's in the Bible. And we're going to be in the 10th chapter of John this morning. And uh, the Lord describes a whole lot of different things here. He talks about a lot of different things. But, but one thing he talks about is that he is the shepherd. He's the door to the kingdom of heaven. And I want to kind of break that down this morning and explain some things because it is very wonderful and very interesting of what is going on at this time here in the history of our Lord. Verse 10, uh, chapter 10, excuse me, verse 1. He says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Father, thank you for the day that you've given us. Thank you for the time that you've set aside for us to come together to study your holy scripture, Lord, and to, to learn from the word of God. Father, move me out of the way that I'll just be a vessel that's standing here that you anoint you fill with your Holy Spirit. Let your spirit speak to us this day that we may bring honor and glory to your holy name, that we may be part of your sheep and follow the shepherd all the days of our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So he starts out and he says, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs up some other way is a thief and a robber. I want you to think about what does a thief do? They come for one reason, don't they? A thief has one purpose in life, and that's to steal. That's to steal and to destroy and to do whatever they possibly can to get what they're coming after, right? That's their job. And I want you to understand here, as he's talking about people that, in, in, in the previous chapter, Jesus just healed this blind man in chapter 9. He healed this man that was blind from birth. And the Pharisees didn't believe. They thought, you know, uh, they asked him, they said, well, who was this man that healed you? And he said, I don't know, a prophet, I guess. And, they, and, and so they were, they were just really getting after him because they wanted to know what happened. So then they called his parents and wanted to know that he, to make sure he was blind from birth because they didn't believe what Jesus was doing. See, the Pharisees were so caught up in religion, if you will. They were so tied up in religion that they could not find the gospel. They could not find the door. They didn't know, even know who the doorkeeper was. They didn't know anything about where they were going or where they were headed. They were totally confused. Because they were so wrapped up in Jesus did this on the Sabbath. He healed this man on the Sabbath day. And they were so tied up in this that they could not get to the point of understanding that this is the Messiah standing in front of us. Thieves and robbers came before. And that's what thieves and robbers are. Is there are people that, that distorted the word of God. That is people that, it, that, that got caught up in religion instead of Christianity. Instead of following Christ. See, religion is trying to lead and do something on your own. Trying to follow a tradition. Christianity is to be a Christ follower. To follow him. To be somebody, uh, to be part of his sheep in the fold of Christ. And that's what he's explaining here. He says, and in chapter 1, he's talking about he is the door to the sheepfold. He is that door. And the sheepfold is the nation of Israel. That's what he's talking about here. And he says, uh, Jesus will lead the sheep out of Judaism and out from under the law. Okay, see, we know what the law is. The law of Moses, the Ten Commandments. So, because Jesus came, does that mean that the law uh, is not, not any good anymore? Is that what it means? No. No, it doesn't mean that the law doesn't stand. The law was fulfilled. Jesus came to fulfill the law. But what Jesus came is so we'd have grace. Jesus come that we may have life. And in a minute, we'll find out what kind of life. He says abundant life in verse 10. 
He tells us about that abundant life that He's going to give us. But see, Christ came because before then, we've talked about this before, before then sin was just what? It was covered. It wasn't washed away. Without the blood of Jesus, sin was just covered. In the Old Testament, when they did the blood sacrifices, it covered the sin. But then they had to do another one when they sinned again, and another one, and another one. Jesus came and paid the debt, and he paid it all in full. There's no more blood sacrifice for sin. It's been paid on Calvary. It's been paid by the shepherd. He is the door. And that's what he's saying here in verse 1. As he's saying, he is the door He's the sh to the sheepfold of the nation of Israel. Right now, he hasn't got to us. Okay? He's going to get to us uh, about verse 11 or 10. We're going to get to that in a minute. But right now, he's talking about the Jews. Right now, he's talking about the Jews. He's focusing on his people right now. But praise God, we're grafted in. Praise God that we're the Gentiles, that's us. We're grafted into the sheepfold. And he's going to bring us in here in just a little bit. But he is that door to the sheepfold. And verse 2, he is the door of the sheep. He is the door of the sheep. Jesus is the door of those coming out of Judaism like the blind man. He had no place to go that we talked about in chapter 9. He had no place to go after he was excommunicated. They kicked him out. They said, you know what? We don't know what kind of stuff's going on here, and I'm paraphrasing. But he said, we don't know what kind of sorcery and what kind of evil stuff's going on. That's what the Pharisees told him. you got to get out of here. They talked to his parents, found out he was blind from birth, and his parents said he's old enough to answer for himself. We don't know what to tell you. You talk to him. And he said, I don't know. I think he was a prophet, but all I know was I was blind, and now I see. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's us, folks. Once we were blind, but now we see. Why do we see? Because we found the door to the sheepfold. We found the door of the sheep. And that's how we can see. Because God is He's bringing it all together. See, that's what's so amazing about the Word of God. That's what's so amazing about the Bible. Is because it's all in order. It all comes together. It's not something that is just a bunch of mumbo jumbo that's scattered out everywhere. God does everything in order. And that's why in, in, in verse 1, he says, Most surely I say unto you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the way of the door, but climbs in as a thief or a robber. Jesus came in the right way, folks. He come in because he's a lineage of David. He's out of, out of the out of lineage of King David. He come in through a virgin. He was born of a virgin. He knew no sin. And to this day, he knows no sin. But everything come in line out of God's perfection here. And so, number two, he's the door. Number, th number three, let's go on down to verse 9. Verse four, let's jump up to verse 4. And when he brings out his own sheep, he, gives before, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he had spoke to them. Let's go down to verse 9. He says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. He's the door, folks. He's salvation, both to the Jew and to the Gentile. John 14 and 6 tells us Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way to the kingdom of heaven except through Jesus Christ. And if anyone tells you there's another way to heaven, then they're not preaching out of this Bible right here. They're teaching you false. They're a thief and they're a robber because they're not teaching the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And that's what he's telling them here. Is he's telling them, I'm the door of the sheepfold. I'm the door of the sheep. And I am the door. There's no other way in. There's no other way literally into the sheepfold other than me. So to him, the doorkeeper, let's go back to verse 3. To him, the doorkeeper, which that's the Holy Spirit. The doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. What is interesting to me here, and I did a little studying here and looking up, the doorkeeper here, Jesus is referring to the Holy Spirit. But in this time, in this culture that Jesus is speaking of, the door of the sheep pen had a doorkeeper. 
And this, this fellow, he watched the door, and he watched who came in, and he watched who went out. And the doorkeeper knows the true shepherd and appropriately grants him access. So he knew what they did is they went to the town and they put all their sheep, all the sheep from each different shepherd was in these pens. Now, I want you all to think about something we can relate to. If you took Madison's cows and my cows and everybody in here's cows and put them all in one pen, we ain't going to go to the door and just call them and they all come running to us, are we? That's the difference between cattle and sheep. But that's why he refers to this as sheep. They knew his voice. The sheep knew the voice of the shepherd. And when the shepherd showed up, he didn't have to wait for the access of the doorkeeper because once he spoke, they knew this is our shepherd. This is our king. And that's what Jesus is telling them here. He says, look, if you're in the pen with me, if you're in my pen and I'm in the door, then you're my sheep. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to save you. Is, is things going to come? Is wolves going to come? Is thieves and robbers going to come in to break in? And still, absolutely. Absolutely, things are going to happen. We don't live in a perfect world. But what we have to understand is we have the doorkeeper right now. That's the Holy Spirit. We got the doorkeeper, and he's keeping you protected for the right shepherd. He's protecting you from the fake shepherds. He's protecting you from all of the false shepherds that are out there in this world. And let me tell you, this goes into a, uh, a, a bigger spectrum than that. It also goes into pastors and teachers is what he's also talking about. Because a pastor in Hebrew, a pastor is translated as shepherd. The word shepherd in Hebrew is translated in our culture. Pastor refers to as a shepherd. Now, you've got to trust a pastor to follow him. You can't just sit there and come and listen to him if you don't trust what he's saying is the truth gospel of Jesus Christ, right? You have to trust him. And if you trust him, you'll follow him. And if you'll follow him, you know that he's leading you in the right direction, right? So that's what we have to understand here is we have to be careful because we live in a big world, folks. We live in a big world that, uh, in this country that we live in. And I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of false doctrine. There's a lot of false teachers there's a lot of religious leaders that are still teaching in this day right now. Jesus is talking about this is over 2,000 years ago when this happened. But right now, we're still, fight, we're still dealing with this same circumstance right now. We're still seeing false teaching. We're still seeing the things that, uh, of God get distorted. And, and people are twisting things in the way that they want them to go. And he's saying, look, there ain't but one way. And that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. There's only one, one door. And that one door leads to everlasting life. All the rest of them are fakes. All the rest of them are not part of what I, I have called you to. So we have to understand is if we're going to be in this corral of the Lord's, then we've got to know his, what he knows our name if we're in his corral. And when he calls us, we know who he is. Amen? And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him. For they know his voice. So after he shows up and he gets his sheep and he takes them out, it says they follow him. They follow him. Why? Because they know his voice. Why did the disciples follow Christ? Why did they follow him? Because he was, a, he was a, an awesome teacher? Did they follow him because of the miracles that he performed? They saw him heal the blind. They saw the lame walk. They saw all these miracles happen. Is that why they followed Jesus? No. They follow Jesus because he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. They follow Jesus because he is the great shepherd. They follow Jesus because he is the I am that I am that he told Moses. They follow Jesus because he is and was at that time and still is the Messiah. He's still the king of kings. So that's why they follow Jesus. Because they knew his voice. Yet they will, by, verse 5, yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him. For they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he had spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. He said, I'm the door. Over in chapter 9, he tells them, I'm the light. Now he's saying, I'm the door. Guess what? It ain't a dark entryway you got to go into. 
because the light is shining at the door. It's not like there's doors everywhere and you don't know which one to go through. Look for the light. Look for the light that's shining. Because Jesus said, I've given you a beacon. I've given you a lighthouse to follow. All you have to do is look for the light and you'll know which door to go in. So he's telling us, look for the light. He said, I am the light. He says, I am the door. I am the door. He said, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Number eight, all who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. He said, all these Pharisees and Sadducees, all of these false teachers that came before me, the sheep didn't hear them because everything they were teaching was false doctrine. So verse 9, he says, I'm the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and go in and out and find pasture. He will go in and out and he will find pasture. What is the pasture? The pasture is the world. The pasture is the world. There's a big pasture out there. And the shepherd knows our name. We need to understand. In this life. There's a lot of bad people, but in this life, there's a lot of good people. But the only way you're going to be able to discern the good from evil is a relationship with the shepherd. That's the only way you're going to know. You have to have that personal relationship with the shepherd so that he knows your name and you know his voice. And when he calls, you know which direction to go. So, the pasture is the world. The sheepfold is us. And the shepherd is Jesus. That's what he's telling us. That's what he's telling us in these verses. Verse 10. This is the only thing that a thief does right here. He says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's the only thing a thief's going to come for. What does the devil try to do? Steal kill and destroy if he can steal you away from being right at the verge of converting into christianity and following jesus and salvation if he can steal you away from that then he can kill and he can destroy your life not physically but spiritually he can destroy your life why do you think there's so many people in this world that are lost right now because the thief is doing his job the thief is doing his job. He's keeping the best job that he, he's doing the best job that he can with the time that he has to use. So if he can keep stealing and killing and destroying people's lives, then we live in a world that is in turmoil. We live in a world that's falling apart, right? But that's where we come in. Jesus tells us in the last part of verse 10, what does he say? He says, but. He says, the thief comes not to not does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He says, I, meaning Christ, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. He said, look, you got two choices here. You could follow the thief and you can be deceived because that's what these religious leaders were doing at this time. They were deceiving. He said, you can follow the deceivers or you can follow the bread of life. You can follow the light. You can follow him. He said, it's a choice you got to make. Christ has never forced himself on anyone. It's always free will. It's always our opportunity to follow him. And he tells us, he says, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Does that mean that once I come to salvation, all my troubles are over? I don't have any more headaches or any more heartaches. Everything is great. I live in the perfect world. That's what the world's telling us today. We can do whatever we want, be whatever we want, do whatever we want, and it's a perfect world. Wrong. It's not a perfect world. Jesus told us that if he suffered, we're going to suffer. If they, if they didn't like me, they ain't going to like you. Isn't that what he said? That's what he said. So when you come into the sheepfold, get ready. You need to come in with your battle suits on. You need to come in with your armor. You need to be prepared for war. Because I'm going to tell you right now, the thief's coming. But praise be to God, we know the shepherd. 
we know the shepherd and he's got our back. And you know what? I don't want anybody on this earth to have my back because I've got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I don't need no person to hold my back. But I do appreciate prayers because we are part of the sheepfold, folks. We come together. Sheep beget sheep. We protect each other and we help each other as we see the day of the shepherd coming and he will come. Verse 11, he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Verse 12, but a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. Jesus tells us he's the good shepherd. And here he tells us about a hireling, a man that's hired to go watch the sheep. He tells us about this man, and he tells us that this man doesn't, he doesn't care about the sheep. So when the wolf comes, and we all know who the wolf is spiritually speaking, don't we? It's the old devil. He's the wolf. But when the wolf comes, the hireling's out. The hireling's out. That's false teachers. That's a false preacher. That's your te- people that are teaching false doctrine, this hireling. Because you know what? He's looking out for him. He's not looking out for you. But Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I'm looking out for you. I'm looking out for my sheep. I'm not going to run because the wolf comes. I'm not going to run because destruction and death comes. I'm going to stand firm with you to the end. And that's what he's telling us, that he's going to stand with us to the end. He says, I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I am known by my own. Meaning he knows his sheep, and they know him. Verse 15, as the Father knows me, even so I know the, good, the, I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Let me tell you something. And this time, uh, there, there was a lot of shepherds and there was a lot of sheep. And most of the time, a shepherd wasn't going to die for a sheep. That would be like us laying down and dying for a cow. We're not going to do it. We're going to protect us. But Jesus is saying, I'm not any shepherd. Jesus is saying, I'm not just any shepherd that's out there. He said, I am the shepherd. I am the good shepherd, and I lay down my life for my sheep. He says, and other sheep I have... This is us, folks, right here, verse 16. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Okay, he's talking about the Jews here, the Israelites. Them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Amen goes here. Thank you, Jesus, because now we just come into the sheepfold. Now he just took two herds. He took the Jews and he took the Gentiles, and he brought them together. We get to, we are co-heirs to Jesus Christ because he gave his life for all. Therefore, my Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. He's talking about his death, burial, and resurrection. He laid down his life of his own accord. He says, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. Jesus said, I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it up. Because he was God in the flesh. He he refers to himself three times as a shepherd. In John 10 and 11, he refers to himself as the good shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. Folks, he gave his life. So that we could have eternity. And I know that y'all and I have heard all of our, most of our life growing up in church and have heard Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. We've heard it our whole life. We've come to church and that's all we hear about is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Well, why in the world will we teach something else, folks? He's the way, He's the truth, and He's the life. Why would we not come to church to hear about Jesus? That's the problem. Is these people got wrapped up in themselves and said, well, let's just get tied up in religion 
and this man's healing on the Sabbath. Well, he's got to be a, he's got to be demon possessed because you can't be healing on the Sabbath, folks. I'm gonna tell you what God can do what He wants. He's God. He's my Creator. I don't care what He does as long as I'm with Him. Amen. He can do what He wants, but He is the Good Shepherd. Then in Hebrews 13 and 20, He's the Great Shepherd. It tells us, now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead. He raised Jesus from the dead. There's where he raised from the dead. God raised Jesus. It says, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of of the everlasting covenant. He's the great shepherd. Not only is he the good shepherd, he's the great shepherd. Because because, uh, it says that the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. God raised him from the dead so that he could be our God and we could be his children. And then last and not least, he tells us he's the chief shepherd. He's the chief shepherd. First Peter 5 and verse 4. It says, And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. When the chief shepherd appears, when Jesus appears, he's the light in chapter 9, And he's the door in chapter 10. He says, I am the light and I am the door. And then in 14, he tells us he's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. There's no reason for anybody on this earth. And my little, my my podunk education can understand that Jesus loves me. And that he's the only way to heaven. Then anybody can get that. There's no reason people should not understand that there's the only one way to heaven, and that's Jesus Christ. He tells us in this word, he's the shepherd, he's the chief shepherd, he's the good shepherd, he's the great shepherd. He said, look, I'm not going to force you to come to the door, but if you want to be part of the sheepfold, if you want to be my children, and you want to live for eternity with me, then there ain't but one way. There ain't but one door. All of the rest of them are going to lead to destruction. All of the rest of them are where thieves break in and steal and kill or destroy. But he said, if you want that life and you want it abundant. He didn't mean that when he said that I give you life and I give it more abundantly. Didn't mean that things wasn't going to happen. You, you was going to have a wonderful life. What he means is that abundant life is eternity. That abundant life is forever with Christ. That abundant life doesn't stop when you're put in a box and dropped in the ground. That abundant life is for eternity with Jesus Christ. That's what he's telling us here in John chapter 10. He's telling us, look, if you want to come after me, then you've got to give it up. Whatever it is that's in your life that's holding you back, you've got to give it up. You've got to get rid of the trash. You've got to take it to the dump. And you've got to get lined up with what I have for you. God's got something for everybody on this earth. And all we have to do is understand that he loves us and follow him. And that's the biggest hang-up. I believe as a child that was my biggest hang-up. My mama taught me the word, and, 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 and she, she brought us up in the admonition of the Lord, took us to church and all of this, and that was all great. And could I tell you anything from my youth? Probably not because I was just mad because I had to be at church. But I can tell you when the seed is planted and when God waters, God gives increase. That's what we have to understand is that we live in a world that's lost and dying. Do you want to see the people you love go to hell? You ask an atheist, you want to see the people you love go to hell? Most of the time they're going to tell you no. But they don't believe in God. They're going to tell you no. We were created in the image of God. So how can we not believe and trust and follow? Amen? Amen. Let us close. Father, thank you for the morning that you've given us. Thank you for for these verses that you've you've laid on my heart this morning, Lord. I just I pray that you explain them to the point, Lord, that they they penetrate our heart. That they penetrate our heart and that it and that it it makes us think about things. 
It makes us think about how how we as sheep of, of, of the Most High God when we're out in the world on a daily basis. We come and we spend 30, 45 minutes to an hour here on Sunday morning. But the real life begins when we pull out the gate. It's easy to serve you, Lord, when we're, when we're in here. But when we walk out that gate, it's a big world out there. It's a big pasture. But you tell us that, you, that the sheep know the shepherd's voice. And if we'll just listen for your voice, Lord. And when you call, let us come running. Don't let us kind of meander around, but let us come running when we hear your voice. That we may be part of your sheepfold and part of the kingdom of God. Father, I just give you honor and glory for all that you do. For the wonderful things that you've done here in the past and the wonderful things that you have to do in the future. Because, Lord, you're not through with this old earth. You're not done with it yet. You tell us in your Holy Scripture to occupy until you come. And that occupy doesn't mean for us to just breathe air and oxygen. It means for us to serve. To serve you to the best of our ability until you return to take us home. Father, we just thank you for this day, and we give you honor and glory, and it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.